Hey, Joe Walsh here, Pennsylvania 18. What does it mean? We'll talk about it when Freedom returns at 5. Good morning, Dan and Amy. And uh, Jeannie Ives is up with her closing argument ads on television. You hear them on our station, too, in the breaks. Um, but uh, a more interesting closing argument, I think, uh, or and another interesting closing argument, was made by Tom Morrison, who's uh, been on the show before. He's a conservative Republican from Palatine. He's um, also one of the most respected legislators in the General Assembly on both sides of the aisle because he's a person of integrity. He's out walking for Jeannie Ives, and he filmed a little impromptu uh, Facebook Live post. Hello, everyone. It's Tom Morrison walking door-to-door here in Palatine. We're not... Uh phased by snow or sleet or any of this we're trying to elect my friend for governor Jeannie Ives and the the information that we're passing out uh, deconstructs all these just shameful rounder TV and radio ads trying to take her words out of context distort her record it's so easy to deconstruct these uh, arguments if you actually know the facts look I'm supporting Jeannie Ives because she's the real conservative in this race She has the endorsements of me and nine other state legislators from across the state. Republican organizations, conservative organizations are supporting Jeannie Ives. So many of us trusted Bruce Rauner in 2014, and he really let us down these last three and a half years, and that's why we're supporting her. Um, There's been no greater fighter for taxpayers or families than Jeannie Ives. All right, and uh, with that intro, we're pleased to be joined again by State Representative and Republican candidate for Governor Jeannie Ives. Jeannie, thanks for joining us, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, Dan and Amy. I'm just, Tom Morrison is such a blessing, and he's just, just been a real leader in this campaign. And so what about, uh, he's responding to the uh, the sole argument that Ronner has offered against you for the past uh, eight weeks and $20 million worth of backing of that argument that you're Madigan's favorite Republican. Well, look, you don't have to trust my words. Trust what everybody else says who's been watching my work down there. They all know it's laughable. I mean, even Greg Hines said, um, you know, Rauner gets the Oscar award for the most deceptive campaign lie this season. So uh, just listen to what others say. Um, You don't have to depend on my opinion. It's just not flat out right. It's not true. So yesterday was the last uh, debate before the primary, which is next Tuesday. And uh, (laughs) Governor Rauner, I noticed, was a no-show. You had the floor all to yourself any reason why he wasn't there well he doesn't want to talk about his record because he has no record of accomplishment and uh, quite frankly he doesn't want to answer policy questions because he'll be embarrassed just like he was before the chicago tribune editorial board um that was a pretty scathing um debate that i had with him there and it you know the headline coming out of there said that i crushed him it's because he does not know his policy and well, it matters to people. Yeah. Well, one thing that he did do yesterday, he did veto the state's uh, gun bill. But I noticed that he did it far, far away from Chicago media. He was on, on a radio station uh, downstate and, and said this. That gun dealers are already federally licensed. That is true. And uh, I mean, obviously, I, I watched you on Channel 7, too. You agree that the ve- that, that gun bill should have been vetoed. But uh, do you think this is all political? It, absolutely. It's just political expediency on his part. He, he this campaign and I, m- myself specifically boxed him into a corner on that gun bill. He he had to veto it if he was going to uh, even have any chance on March 20th, which we we think he's done on March 20th. Um, but this is what he's done all the time. He'll never signal to you what he's going to do. So he refused to uh, fill out the NRA survey in 2014. He didn't fill it out in 2018. Uh, what you see with me, though, is like I will tell you ahead of time exactly how I feel about an issue. And I'm not going to hide behind a downstate radio station where media can't respond or an- ans- um, ask any targeted questions. But this is Governor Rauner. He's just ducking and hiding from the voters at every turn, never tells you what to do, what he's going to do. And I guarantee you he will sign those other gun bills. So he's getting ready to you know, betray everybody else on the Second Amendment. Yeah, there was a, a change because he he said he would deal with the legislation after the primary. Initially, that was some of his initial uh, offerings on the topic of what he was going to do on that gun bill. And then then yesterday he hastily announced that he was going to veto it and he vetoed it. So this is to me, it seems like another uh, because his internal numbers must be wobbly. 
this is a way for him to try and snow gun owners the way that he initially snowed so many people when he ran for office. But Dan, this is a perfect example of who he is and how we've we've seen him over the last three years. He's been back and forth on every major policy decision. The, the caucus, the Republican caucus, who is closest to him and understands what's going down in Springfield. You know, first the education bill is a disaster, and then he signs it, and his buddy Rom says, I got everything I wanted and more. The Exxon bill, the morning of, up to 10 amendments because Governor Rauner couldn't signal how he really felt about things and kept waffling and waffling. Finally, they, they get it to a point where he gets boxed in again and signs the darn thing just to say he got something done. So the guy, this is he. He has no core, so you don't know where he's ever going to go on policy. He's just a transactional politician, just like Democrats have been. Yep. Uh, so you're on the driveway home. This is the last weekend before the election. Uh, what are your plans? Where are you traveling? Where are you trying to get the vote out? Uh, we're going down south today. I'm so excited. We're headed to the Metro East area, just outside of St. Louis. So we're flying into Cahokia. We have a a meeting there at 11:30. Then we're headed to Marion right afterwards. A meeting with some voters there at about 3:30. Then we're flying up to Champaign, and we'll be there at from 6 to 7:30 at the, the airport there. And then finally, we'll end up in Rockford at about 8:30, uh, just connecting with voters um, outside of the Chicago area, because we did uh, Chicago media for the last two days, just trying to let people know who we are and where this campaign is headed. A uh, story uh, out yesterday, there's been a, a number of stories by the Edgar County Watchdogs uh, that we've talked mm-hmm. about in this show, but hasn't may, really been picked up in any significant way. Capital Facts picked it up yesterday, but it's about emails that they have from Diana Rahner, and the latest is perhaps the most damaging. It prompted, actually, the Edgar County Watchdogs to file a complaint with the Inspector General, the Office of the Executive, ex, uh, ex, uh, Office of the Executive Inspector General, against Governor Rahner, essentially accusing him— of using state resources for political purposes, which is one of the bases on which a couple of former governors went to prison. And I wonder if uh, you have a comment on what uh, Ronner's, uh, Ronner's response is, you know, kind of w- any OEIG investigation will comply with, but there's no merit to this. Based on what the Edgar County Watchdogs have reported about these emails where you got uh, political people directing state people, it would appear uh, what comment do you have in terms of what the governor should do or not do? The governor, you know, every single email that has both a political staffer of the governor rounders and a paid state employee on the same email chain should be released immediately. I, I'm, I'm alarmed the fact that he would even put the same uh, the political staff in the same meeting room with uh, um, state employees. That's alarming to begin with. I mean, I, as a state rep, I would never do that. I would never do it. I can't believe the governor is so open about doing it. And, that, and then the emails, you know, and obviously they're also coming from his wife. I mean, she's, CC, she's the one even propagating some of this. Well, and the interesting um, thing— it, It's very alarming. And the interesting thing about the email that the Edgar County Watchdogs used as the, the frame for their most recent story is you have uh, Diana Rahner is the emailer— and then the recipients include both political consultants and state employees, but they're using state employees' private email. So this is a way they were trying to essentially end run a FOIA and discoverability, but the Edgar County Watchdogs got the email anyway. And if there's if there's a handful of those, as they've reported, then you know there are many more. Uh, no doubt. And um, just the handful that we have already is, is actually cause for the complaint that the Edgar County Watchdogs um, uh, put forward. And, uh, you know, even after Marashka wrote his memo saying, look, you are really crossing the line here, potentially violating ethics laws in the state of Illinois. Even after that, you find out that when you look at the timeline that's reported in the complaint, that sure enough, um, Rauner is officially signing the K-12 through school funding bill, which was definitely um, something that Diana and political consultants weighed in on to help save the governor uh, on that bill. And then the, he signs the abortion bill. And then he makes a comment about uh, repeal and replace um, uh, Obamacare, which for him is politically advantageous on how he responds to that. He didn't. So he didn't want it. He didn't even wa- after he's warned, you see actions being taken. So there's a lot of missing emails there about what happened. And and on the Obamacare, he didn't want Obamacare repealed and replaced. That's right. Hmm. That's right. 
So when you travel, you know, and meet people throughout the state of Illinois and in DuPage County and Cook County, what's their number one concern? What's their point of contention? Well, for Republicans, it's largely the the sanctuary state bill, taxpayer funding of abortion, and just people just don't trust Rauner anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not somebody that uh, he said he was going to be, and and you know, just wholesale dis- disregard for what he's been doing to the state. So. Uh, it's a trust issue for Republican voters on March 20th. You mentioned the education funding bill and how Diana Rauner intervened to uh, help prop him up. But uh, that was a bill you voted against. Uh, w- why is that? Explain to people your perspective on that ed funding bill that he counts as a, a success. Well, there's a couple things. One, um, Chicago got a massive bailout and they have $17 billion in debt. And what's going to happen over time, really, is you're going to find suburban schools, downstate schools are going to see their school money actually siphoned off through the state funding formula, and it's going to go to Chicago to bail out with their massive debt. The other, two, the other thing is that they never correct the assessment problem. Chicago is hiding enormous amounts of property wealth from the education funding bill. And we told Rauner three years ago, you have to fix this assessment system. It's foundational to a fair education funding uh, a formula. And if you don't fix it, you fix nothing with education. And he failed to do it. He didn't lead on the issue, even though we gave him a program to do so. And he and so he's not fixed anything in education. He's just basically um, bailed out Chicago. What the uh, one of the political arguments that uh, Rauner and uh, the kind of defenseless Rauner supporter makes against you is that uh, Rauner's the only one who can beat J.B. Pritzker because he's the only one with the uh, big checkbook. How do you respond to, you know, you, Jeannie Ives can't win a general election? Um, well, first of all, we're going to win March 20th, and Rauner had a big checkbook, and we're going to spend a fraction of what he has in his war chest. So um, I, I think that people are ready for the truth. And when it comes to J.B. Pritzker, what he's selling, what the, the Democrats all want, which is higher taxes, more spending, um, and, and, and they're going to continue the corrupt nature of Illinois government as it's been for decades. We should message that past their money and past their money spend. And people are going to just look past the fact that, you know, here's the deal. With me, you know where I stand on every issue. With J.B. Prister, you have no idea. You know, you know, all you know is that, you know, he likes to pull the toilets out of his second mansion to get a property tax break. And, you know, he's buddies with Blagojevich. And he's got the, all these other... Uh, nefarious contacts with state government that has destroyed the Illinois economy. So uh, we think we can message past that. You don't, we're going to prove that the grassroots actually can take back their state, and it's not going to take billion, a billionaire to do so. So, I mean, you're essentially saying this is the, the, what, what something like I want to say, and this, this is about stoking the revolt against the ruling class like we've seen throughout the Midwest. Um, precisely. And if you, nobody believes um, that any of the Democrats, or Rauner for that matter, is going to really transform Illinois in the way that we need to. Look, worst run state in the country, second year in a row. Uh, largest out migration, second year in a row. Uh, and, you know, look at the Florida job creation. Florida has gained since 2000 well over a million jobs. Illinois' growth in that time, 21,000 jobs. That's pathetic for the fifth largest um, economy in the United States. So, uh, you know, people are leaving the state of Illinois, and nobody's talking about the real issues except for this campaign, except for me. And nobody, and, and nobody believes any of the other candidates are going to actually uh, transform Illinois and lead, really, the revolt like you talked about so, against the political ruling class. So what's the question? That, I've already done that. What, what's the question you want to implant in Republican primary voters' minds when they go to the polls on March 20th? What do you want them to be asking themselves and answering, you know, affirmatively, Jeannie Ives? They should ask themselves, are you proud of this Republican governor? Are you proud of the job that he's done? And then, are you proud of how he's ran his campaign with lies and deception? Those are two important questions for for Republican voters to answer. And I think on March 28th, when they go into the ballot box, uh, go to the ballot box, they're going to vote for Jeannie Ives. All right. She is Jeannie Ives, Republican candidate for governor, state rep from Wheaton. Jeannie, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you.
and she joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's like a hot, steaming cup of information to start your day. It's Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer.